out at the Green River Gorge State Park near the little ghost town of Franklin walking along these trails. There's a mix of pretty well maintained trails and kind of muddy slog at this time of year. It's late February. There's a little bit of snow on the ground. Everything's warming up and melting so it's pretty wet. But there's some beautiful sunlight and it's not freezing cold. I'm just walking along the river looking for a place to paint. I'd like to set up and do a quick oil painting. There's a pretty little waterfall along one of the steeper trails, but there's really not a lot of space to stand. Park and the parking lot's kind of full, so I don't want to take up a good chunk of the trail. Alright, well this looks promising. It's a little noisy here by the river, I hope you can hear me. I like that cliff face across the river. And I think since I'm facing kind of southwest, I'm thinking the sun is going to swing further this way to the west. And it'll maybe throw some light on that cliff face and those trees on that steep slope. So I think I'll try to come up with a composition something like this. Somewhere in this area. I'm not sure if I'll go vertical or horizontal just yet. I'll get set up and have a cup of coffee. I'll take a look at the composition on my iPhone. I'll crop it a little bit and try to come up with something interesting. That's kind of nice too. I really like that backlit pine tree in front of the scene, but I think that's going to fade pretty quickly. I'll take some pictures and I'll maybe add that or paint something similar in the studio. It's really beautiful. I like that little path of the snow across the river as well where it's coming down the hill picking out details on the slope. Dead logs and branches and the bushes. got a nice spot here to stand, nice wide part of the trail, so if someone does come down this way they can get around me easily. There was a log across this trail I had to kind of climb over, so maybe not too many people will come this way. I don't mind people coming and talking to me while I paint, but it's also nice just to get on with it. I'll be painting on this 8x10 birch panel. I get these from Blick. They're really inexpensive, but they're kind of a traditional 
substrate so I know they'll have a good life. I apply some PVA first and then I throw three or four coats of acrylic gesso and then I draw my one-third lines on so that I can quickly draw the composition. Here's the scene I came up with. I'm going to go with a landscape orientation. I'm just going with the 8x10 because the scene is pretty complicated and I'm afraid if I go with a bigger panel I'll just add more detail than is what is needed. So I want to go quick. I'm going to go with a small panel this time. If it works out well, I may come back and, and try a larger panel. It's a really pretty spot. Nice flat place to stand and a wide trail. I'll start with a charcoal sketch. I'll just pencil in the big shapes really quickly. I'll play with the composition a little bit and try to move things around so they line up. I want to put the things that are interesting on the intersecting lines, the where the one-third lines intersect. So that backlit pine tree, I want that along one of the one-third lines. I want the riverbank along another. So if I have to move things around a little bit, if I have to deviate from what I'm seeing there in the scene, that's okay. I can play with it. What I really want to capture here is the feeling of the place. I want to watch the sun travel across the scene and let it inspire me. It may tell me I need to come back a little bit later in the day or at a different time of the year to try to capture a really beautiful moment. And I just want to have fun. I want to get some exercise painting and physical exercise hiking and just get some brush mileage in. Thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Give me some comments below if there's something you like or dislike about what I'm doing, how I'm approaching it, if you have ideas where I should try painting next. Alright, here's the composition. I've got that backlit pine tree here and this nice slope coming down. It's a really interesting shape. It's kind of a Dr. Seuss type look to it. I'm not going to go for that fanciful a shape, but it's kind of what it reminds me of. It's kind of a nice slope and a bend down toward the water. So that's at a, one of the centers of interest. And this pine tree is close to being on this one-third line. The river kind of flows in along here. I moved this boulder and made it bigger. I want it to be more of a kind of a highlight, but not quite right on that intersection, a little bit off. There's a nice pool here with some white water rapids all around that, not really a pool, but just a deeper, smooth flowing section of the river there that's really pretty. And then this white rock shape will be really pushed back in the background, just hinted at in this painting so that the tree stands out in front of it. All right, I'll get into the turpentine wash. So if you watch my videos, you know I like water. I like trees, I like backlit trees, so this is a really nice scene. I'm liking the what the light is doing to the water there too. It's starting to pick out some highlights on the white water, so this will be interesting to stand here this afternoon and see what the light does as it travels across the scene. Turpentine wash is just uh, artist turpentine with a little bit of oil paint, and you do a quick wash in. I'm careful that I don't spill my turpentine on the ground. My board is above my palette, so any drips fall on my palette. I want to leave this place just as pretty and clean as I found it. In the scene, I'm seeing a lot of burnt umber in the background and then a lot of yellow in the foreground. I think actually what I'm seeing is yellow in the river with a little bit of cad yellow, a little bit of orange. And then as it comes closer, it's getting more warm, so more burnt 
sienna and more cad yellow. So those are the colors I'll use for the turpentine wash. Once I have the wash in, I'll go back in with the brush with a little bit of turpentine and just wipe away the lightest lights. Try to move the paint around a little bit to get a value pattern. I do the turpentine wash because it helps set up that value pattern. It helps me to play a little bit with the composition. It's almost like doing a no tan or a, a two value study in that it's not the true color, but it, it, it's getting something down on the panel. It's killing the white of the panel. And it's letting you play in a really dynamic way with the composition. I really enjoy doing it. There's the turpentine wash in. I'm gonna let that set up just a little bit. I'll take that same big brush, I'll wipe it out with my rag here so that I get most of the turpentine out and just blend everything softly, kind of harmonize everything just a little bit more. And then I'll move into mixing the colors that I see. This is the beauty of using a small panel. It's going to force me to simplify. So that wall back there, will have two or three colors max and I just need to live with that. I'm not going to be able to catch every bit of texture and every shade. It's really beautiful. That rock wall is really beautiful but it's too complicated to try to capture here. If I tried I would lose the light. So I'll start with that back wall. I'm going to mix it kind of dark and very cool so that the backlit tree will stand out against it and so that I get that nice contrast with the river. I mentioned in a recent video that I got a new little facade box, a day tripper from Prolific Painter. This is Joshua Bean's invention, I believe. I really like it. So far, so good. I've taken it out a couple times now and it's, it seems really sturdy. It's actually a little slimmer. It's not as deep as the uh, box I was using before. And it has a glass palette, which I really like. So yeah, good so far. I'm enjoying it. Alright, I've got some colors mixed up here for that background wall. Kind of a dark lavender for the far distance to the right. And a dark green where I, I'm seeing like dark green moss on the on that rock wall. Some colors mixed up for that the background pine trees. And some greens mixed up for the mossy rocks on that bank. And then some shades of gray, kind of a bluish, lavender, yellowish for the lighter parts of that background rock wall. And I've also got a couple burnt sienna, kind of warm tans where the rock is, there's like a mineral deposit over there that's really, it really appears warm to me, but I know it's not gonna read that. I can't warm it up like it looks. I need to keep it dull and gray so that the foreground stands in front of it.
some colors mixed up now for the river and for that backlit pine tree. So the backlit pine tree colors are right here. They're really vibrant. As you can see, these are the colors I used before. How dull and dark they are compared to these colors. And then here's the colors for the river. They're even lighter in value, but not quite as vibrant as this. The light's really changing. It's fading fast. I am noting as the sun shifts across the sky, the rapids on the river, the shadow side of the rapids, they're developing this beautiful light blue, almost just a hint of lavender blue. Really pretty against that yellow where the sun is hitting the, the water, the white of the water directly, and that soft yellow ochre green of the river. I got finished, at least as far as I'm going to get here today. Here's where I ended up. I'm tempted to do more detail on that tree, but I know I'm, I'm losing the light so much that it's going to just become a mess. So I'm going to leave it unfinished. What I did is I captured the color notes as best I could. That beautiful, almost phthalo green on the far bank of the river coming to a really warm yellow ochre tone here. We've got a vibrant yellow of the rapids on the sun side and a lavender kind of color where the rapids are in the shade and then just some beautiful gradation in the river. I do like how this green tree with the orange moss is vibrant. It's standing out in front of this purple, lavender background hill. I'd like to bump up this rock face a little bit. You can see in reality it's much starker, especially now as the sun is coming around and I'm getting more reflected light on that rock face from the water. Beautiful place. Really beautiful place. I may do a little larger studio oil based on this scene. Well, that's it. I really appreciate you joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly got some inspiration here today. This beautiful spot. It's a beautiful world. 
I sure love getting out in nature and finding something to inspire me and try to capture it. It's a huge challenge. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes it kind of ends in a mess. But I do always enjoy it. Well, I hope I see you out on the trail, and I'll see you in the next one.